Twilight's Nightmare, Chapter 29, Part 7, Hidden in Ponyville. Elytron the Changeling, currently calling herself Emerald Shade, was still in a daze. Twilight was interested in her. She had felt the desire, the lust. She'd even given her room number to the Alicorn. This was turning into the best case scenario, one that was so unlikely that she had not really prepared for it. She let her eyes linger on the purple Alicorn as she walked away. There was very definitely a sexy sway to her emotions for the first few strides. She slowly inhaled, trying to calm herself. The Alicorn's emotions had hit her like a tidal wave. She knew that Alicorns were more powerful and she couldn't wait till later, assuming Twilight showed up. A single taste of her desire was almost like a drug. Her entire being craved more. There had been a hint of something holding Twilight back that tasted like exasperation. By her actions, if she was having second thoughts, she had firmly pushed them aside. A lazy smile drifted on Elytron's face. After tonight, assuming there was a tonight, Twilight would have been able to have a single doubt about needing Elytron in her life. Looking to the rest of the ponies compared to Twilight, they now all seemed grey and lifeless. The only exception being Twilight's daughter teleporting around gathering up the walking disasters known as the Crusaders. Turning back to the pony food in front of her, she ate it with all appearance of enjoyment. She had been in Ponyville since the new noble guide made his bargain with the changelings. Too much was going on here, and the queen needed to know everything so she would not make another mistake, like the Candlelight Wedding. The primary and secondary missions were right out. No changeling could teleport as frequently as a little star and keep up their disguise, no matter how much love they were feeding on, so there was no way to take her place. Twilight was another problem. No link could replace her knowledge, let alone her power. If the rumor of a heated exchange between Twilight and Celestia were true, then there was no way any changeling could step into that role without knowing far more. With Chrysalis's restrictions in place since her getting spotted as Cadence, the risk was just too great to be allowed. In a way, she was grateful. She didn't want to have to stand up against an enraged Celestia. Now with her goals not seeming achievable, Twilight had just fallen right into her hooves. She bit her lip with enough force to feel pain. This was no dream. The question was how she would take advantage of this. Well, however it went, at least she wouldn't be going hungry for a while. A few hours later, she was talking to Rarity about dresses. That Mara could talk endlessly about the annoying garments. Given Elytron's elegant appearance, there was almost no way to avoid at least having to model some. So taking advantage of it, she purchased some more... interesting garments for tonight, should Twilight visit her. Rarity's knowing look promised that she would be asking for details at some point in the future. Depending on how things went, Rarity might be getting more than she bargained for. If she could annoy her back or make her blush brightly, the amusement alone would be worth it. She wondered what Rarity would think if she knew whose benefit Elytron was getting her special order for. Apparently her friend Fluttershy was feeling lonely, one of her friends missed some sort of weekly tea again. By the sounds of it, she's mostly been staying at home, waiting on his return. If she could find out who it was, then that would prove an ideal opening for a love collector. A wave of excitement flooded in from outside. She headed to the window of the boutique to look at what was going on. She noticed a moment later that Rarity had joined her. Most of the ponies outside were looking to the skies. Twilight and Rainbow Dash were attacking each other with weapons. In a blur of motion, there was an exchange of blows. Oh my! Rarity exclaimed, with a deep pull of concern and worry rolling off of her, twisting Elytron's insides as if she felt nervous. Elytron studied the two combatants, shifting her eyes just ever so slightly to magnify what she was seeing. Twilight was circling back, a goofy grin plastered on her face. Instead of wounds, there were faintly glowing red marks on her body. Some sort of training weapons. This sort of thing was yet another out-of-character action for Twilight. Is there a rival hive out there that has already replaced her? She thought for a moment, before shaking her head. There was no way for a changeling to afford to radiate that much emotion for more than a moment. I'm sorry, Emerald, I have to get going, right now. Rarity said, as she used her magic to almost instantaneously close up her shop. Elytron reached out and placed a hoof on Rarity's shoulder. No need. See those red glows? Those are marks from training weapons. The only way that they can hurt themselves with them is if they try to eat one and choked on it. How can you be sure? Rarity asked with dubious acceptance. Concern wafted from her, held in check by her more rational mind. Elytron smiled, casting a pane of magic into the air, enhancing it to magnify what was viewed through it. Just like a twilight. She's grinning. Unless she's Nightmare Moon, then she wouldn't be grinning about cutting into her friend with wing blades, right? A pulse of alarmed panic erupted from the white mare. Oh, just look at what the poor dear has done to her mane! Rarity said as she rushed off, leaving the medical supplies behind and grabbing tools much more suited for a fashion emergency. Elytron shook her head and started packing her purchases, a new dress into her saddlebags, leaving the agreed-upon price on the counter. Elytron made her way back onto the streets of Ponyville. The small town was abuzz with chatter. Some ponies were going on about the battle between the two mares and what it could possibly mean. The dome that they had been fighting in was now completely opaque, allowing no pony the chance to look inside. But that didn't stop all sorts of crazy rumors, though, from one killing the other to them being romantic partners. 
The Pink Terror bounced happily by, getting party supplies. That likely meant that she at least thought whatever was happening was a good thing. Elytron shuddered. She remembered her welcome to Ponyville party. The Pink Mare was more than a little overbearing. Her sugar-fueled high-intensity happiness was something that took time to become accustomed to. The leader of the town, which for some reason that made no sense, was a common earth pony and not Twilight. No matter how much she learned about ponies, it made no sense why they'd have one of their worker class in a leadership role. Yes, they were a little low on leader class ponies, only having four and a still developing spare. Walking past the Pegasus Stallion, she could feel a particular brand of anticipation. She felt greed and pleasure that she had taken to mean a reporter just had a scoop, and there would be an interesting headline in the morning. The attention focusing on the town could be... problematic. She considered just killing or having a drone replace the pony, but no. That would prove unwise, as nice it would be to have another pony that they could afford to drain dry. Elytron thought about how wonderful it would feel to drain the purple princess to a husk. She felt her mouth water in the endless hollow within her quake with need. That was something that would never be allowed more than a fleeting taste of. Twilight's energy would be the queen's to consume in the end, and not a lowly infiltrator, no matter how good she was. Resolving that she would enjoy whatever morsel of emotions that she could get from Twilight, she considered how best to get the mare to feel stronger about her. The store in front of her had a new sign informing passers-by that it would be closed for a day next week by royal decree. Looking around, it seemed like every store that Mayor Mare visited was putting up a similar sign. Moving a little closer to see the small print revealed nothing more, only that it was all happening due to Twilight's orders. Up ahead, the mayor was dragging some construction ponies with her, pointing her hoof at some areas and gesturing loudly. To one side, an Azor show mare was threatening loudly to turn any pony that tried to move her wagon with being turned into a teacup. If the princess wanted her home moved, she could come by and ask her herself. At this rate, half of the town would be doing stuff under orders from Twilight. What was she planning? The taste of the emotions from the town shifted to a mix between excitement and worry, the blend being different from pony to pony. She passed the store, and from within it, she felt a mild imitation of her hunger. It was likely one of their money-grabbing ponies, the closest thing to a predator that existed in their weak species. At least she managed to go about relatively unnoticed. She took advantage of it to do a little bit of spying. A glance at paperwork here, a stolen item there. Twilight's distraction allowed her to achieve over half of her objectives of opportunity. As she moved on, she overheard a conversation between two random ponies. They were so bland compared to Twilight, they were almost part of the background. I can't believe Twilight is throwing her weight around like this. The first said. It's about time. She's been a princess for years. The second answered. She can't just do this. She can. And are you seriously going to say no to her bits? Elytron shook her head and hurried back into the inn. After what felt like a very long day trying to blend in and seem interested in all this madness, she finally got to retreat to her room. A polite wave to the receptionist and she was at last alone. No matter how long she spent with ponies, they still didn't make any sense. Elytron was lying in bed. It was late, but she couldn't sleep. Just the thought that Twilight might be arriving had her buzzing. If it weren't for her disguised form's lack of wings, it would have been very literal. She was dressed in the white lace of her special purchase and had her eyes closed, resting as best as she could. The long socks were surprisingly comfortable and would feel nice used on a soft-skinned pony. She suddenly sensed Twilight being inside of her room, even though she had no idea how she got there. Opening her eyes, she looked up to see the alicorn's hungry eyes devouring her body. The mare's body was screaming her need, her lust. The fact that Twilight had picked her was almost unbelievable. Do you agree that you will not inform a soul of anything that happens between us? That anything that you gain from me or from knowing me is yours and yours alone? You will never sell or give it away? Twilight intoned. Of course. The response came easily to Elytron. She would promise anything for the feast that she was about to receive. It was not as if she would have to keep it anyway. The burst of happiness coming from Twilight when she heard those words might have been suspicious, if not for what happened next. It was a long night and not much sleep was had. They were lying there. Twilight was calm, relieved, and relaxed in the bed, absently trailing her feather tips along Elytron's flanks. She was no longer a bundle of repressed need and desire. Instead, a wave of quiet peace and contentment blanked Elytron's emotional perceptions. Even this peaceful moment was a feast to Elytron. It seemed Twilight screamed even her most gentle of emotions. <sighs> you know, it's so tiring pretending to be something that you're not. The urge to let one's mane down and just revel in what you were made for. Twilight let out a long sigh. But no, if their princess of friendship was seen acting like that, there would be talk. The nobles would take action, and the rest of the elements would all be judgmental. It would just be so nice to be able to show my true colors, but alas, the time for such things are lost to history. If she only had words to go on, Elytron wouldn't be able to work out if Twilight had a secret side to her, or if this was just some sort of abstract way of letting her know that she was screwed. With a sense of wistful longing coming from Twilight, there was no way that she wasn't being honest. Why are you telling me all this? Elytron asked. Because I know I can trust you to not tell any pony. 
Twilight smiled softly. Not being able to just be myself has been more stressful than I expected it to be. But then, who are you? Twilight laughed. I know who I was. Who I am is more... problematic. I understand, even if I can't exactly empathize. Going from a unicorn librarian to an alicorn princess. About the only things that didn't change was your gender and coloration. Elytron said, making sure to sound genuine. <sighs> quite. Twilight's short responses didn't display the slight annoyance that she felt at Elytron's answer, but that didn't stop it from being obvious that the changeling's emotional sense. Rather than say anything else, Twilight used her magic to somehow acquire a bottle of wine and two glasses. There was no arcane vibration indicating a teleport or dimensional pocket being used. Twilight poured wine for the both of them, adding a small portion of silver liquid from a vial to her own. I actually thought they wouldn't do it, but damn, they actually did it. Holy shit, I never would have guessed that. Anyways, let's get on to our magical donators. Top donators are 630, Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, and only one thing. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Crazy Killer 557, Stu Hex, Will, Omicron Lyrae, Chris, Twinkie, Dospo, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, Runes Life 3952, Mad Men's Den, Leslie Perkett, Drake Love Dragon, Hunter Norman, Stephen Bingham, Line Got 12, Sorcerer Constantine, Hud Zaza, Convair, and many more fantastic people. Thank you so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.